Well, good morning. Um, just checking the sound here. We're good. Thank you. Well, it's a blessing for me to be here. Uh, it's a privilege. Uh, second time I've been in the Crete. First time it was snowy, icy, cold, and, and this is beautiful. I come from a tropical country. I was born and raised in Guatemala. A lot of sunshine. So I brought a little bit with me today. I hope you enjoy it. And um, uh, thanks for letting me share a little bit about the ministry that I uh, represent. And can we put on the, the slides, please? There we go. Thank you. Just going to open this. So, yeah, my name is Jose. And it's not a Scandinavian name, as you might guess. It's a Latin name. Um, uh, if anybody here speaks Spanish, buenos dias, que Dios le bendiga. Es un gusto para mí estar aquí con ustedes. And um, it will be a privilege to speak some Spanish with you after the service if you want to practice a little bit of uh, words there in Spanish. So um, um, I am married, um, one wife and one daughter. Um, and we came to Canada about seven years ago. We live in Surrey, in BC. Um, Rains a lot, but it's easier to shovel rain than snow. So I think that's, that's a good part. It's always gray, but it's, a, it's, a, it's good weather. And um, God opened the doors for me to serve in this ministry called Child Care International. In Guatemala, I, I went to Bible school, and I'm an engineer by profession. And God, through different mysterious ways, just is using a Guatemalan in Canada to bless children in different parts of the world. And he's using the church. I want to thank this church because you have been uh, committed to helping children. Um, I know this is not the first time someone comes and shares about the ministry. And many of you support children, uh, sponsor some of them. And I want to uh, really thank the leadership of this church for allowing us to, to share what we do as a ministry. So for those of you who have never heard of uh, Child Care International, or CCI for short. Um, uh, I'm going to share a little bit, and perhaps easier would be to talk about what we do and what we envision. So here is our mission. We want to break the cycle of poverty one child at a time. And we do that through Christ-centered education. So it's not that we just want to bring education to children, which is good, but we want to share the gospel with them. It is not enough just to educate children if they don't know the Lord. If they don't know uh, God's purpose for his or her life, then, again, it's a good thing that we educate children, but what about their eternal destiny? And what about their life on this earth? How, how can they be used? So that's our mission. And our vision, we, we dream of a, a world in which every child is cherished, educated, and inspired to live with purpose and joy. And so what do we do? Well, in a nutshell, we do four things. And you can see some um, icons there. Uh, first of all, we provide faith-based faith education. So we partner with local Christian schools in poor areas around the world. So these are schools that are Christian. They, they not only develop the academic area of the children, but they share the gospel on a daily basis. They have devotionals. They have retreats, they have camps, they give a Bible to each student, and they usually belong to a church in which a pastor ministers to the children. So that's the most important thing that we do. We also um, have some interventions when medical um, relief or emergency is needed, let's say after a typhoon or um, after an earthquake uh, or something like that. Um, also, very important is the spiritual and character building, and finally, providing water and food. So that's what childcare provides. And we have seen that in the, in the long run, um, children that belong to this sponsorship program um, develop really important characteristics in their lives. And the first of all, it, of course, if they're in a school, they get good quality education. And Christian schools are very committed to be even better than non-Christian schools. And uh, there are countries like Thailand, for example, less than 2% of the whole population is Christian. So these schools that we partner with trying to be even better 
so non-Christian families could register their children at school. The, the second thing, and really, really important, is that we see that children develop this sense of hope. In many of these places, and I will share a little bit with you, they come and they live in really complicated and hopeless situations. Many live like in the city dump. They collect garbage to live. And the message that they receive is basically, you are garbage. You smell like garbage. You live in the garbage. So children believe they are garbage. But when someone calls, comes and tells them, no, you were made in the image of God. You have a purpose. Somebody cares for you. And there's a plan for you. And you can be even used by God. It changes a whole understanding of who they are. And they are injected with hope and self-worth. We treat them with dignity, and we provide a place for them to have a safe space. As time goes by, they find job opportunities, and they get employed, and finally they become church and community leaders. Okay, so let's, uh, that's a little bit about CCI, about me, and I want, you to, I want to invite you to go to the Bible. And we will go through different passages in the life of a very important biblical character, life of Moses. So if you want to open your Bible in Exodus chapter 1, that's easy, that's just the second book of the Bible, and um, we will bounce through different, different passages, so we are not just going to stay in one place. So talking about Moses, well, just reading that name reminds me of so many, so many things. Remember his uh, story. He was born in a dark, really dark time in the history of the Jews. He was found by the daughter of Pharaoh on the Nile. He was nurtured by his mother for only a few precious years before being deposited in the pagan culture of Egypt. Impulsive in his attempt to free his own people, well, he killed someone and he, then he fled to the desert. Uh, with a criminal record, completely convinced he was a failure. He married, he took care of his father-in-law's flock, and endured 40 years of darkness, loneliness, and silence as God was forming and preparing him so that he could one day free God's people, but God's way, not his own way, in the epic event of the Exodus. Well, this is a shocking story for me. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the life of Moses tells us a lot about the lives of the children that we serve around the world, as well as our own lives. Today, we're going to meditate on several passages of the book of Exodus, and they will guide us to explore how God uses people like Moses, people like you, people like me, to fulfill his plan. During that journey, I will also share with you one story that illustrates how God uses, transforms the life of children. And they will remind us once again that God is still in the business of using broken, bruised, and scarred vessels to fulfill his plan. So, the first thing that I find in the life of Moses, and if you want to go to verse 22, I have it there, but if you want to use your Bible, I think that's a very good thing. You know, I, I miss, like, listening to the sound of pages when people put the Bible. Now everything's kind of digital, but it's, it's so good to have your Bible. And so verse 22 says, Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, every son who is born, you are to cast into the Nile. Every daughter, you are to keep alive. Okay, so although we already know the happy ending of the life of Moses, it was a still very complicated and tortuous childhood as measured by today's standards. Uh, we must recognize that his early childhood experiences were quite traumatic. He was born in an environment that was highly insecure, volatile for children. The ruler of his country 
wanted to kill him as soon as he was born. He had to be hidden and then was abandoned by his mother, even though it was for the best of the reasons. Now, I want us to take some time and remember those key moments in your life when you went to those dark nights in your spiritual walk. Maybe, like Moses, you were born in despair. Possibly you had difficulties in the context of relationships, a conflictive friendship, a complicated divorce, an abusive relative. And sometimes our circumstances have worked to drown our faith. Could that be poverty, health problems, constantly changing houses, leaving a country in which you were born? I don't know, it's, um, it's a reality, it's a sad reality that we all go through. Moses was born in a difficult situation, raised in despair. Perhaps you and I have gone through the same thing. And that remembers also of the, um, reminds me of the same situation with faith with the children that we minister around the world in many countries. They are born in extreme poverty, in very isolated places. They come to this world in very difficult social context. And like Moses, they must overcome great risks, including physical danger and even death. Then they live their first years of life in fear, and sometimes, like in the case of Moses, their parents must take extreme measures. Let me tell you about Philippe. Philippe St. Fort is a very poor young, well, was a very poor young boy, living in the rural village of Lagrange near St. Mark in central Haiti. The extreme heat of the tropical sun with the threat of droughts make living there extremely difficult. Families live in small thatched huts with dirt floors, and the chronic shortage of food and safe drinking water only add to the desperate living conditions. So this will be a typical house in central Haiti And this would be normal setting children as they live in that island. You know, Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. So Philippe was born there, uh, like in an isolated village. Okay, let's go back to the story of Moses. Let's go to chapter 2 and verses 5 and 6. The second thing that I find in the, in the life of Moses is that he was rich by the grace of God. Let's read uh, chapter 2, verse 5, 6, and then we'll move on to verse 10. It says, The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking alongside the Nile. And she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid, and she brought it to her. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. She had pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Let's move on to verse uh, 10. And it says, The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she named him Moses and said, Because I drew him out of the water. So desperate times sometimes require extreme measures. Although circumstances may be extremely difficult, they nevertheless provide an opportunity to exercise faith in God's intervention and doing his will. Jochebed's attempt to save Moses shows that she took the path of faith. The baby was rescued, saved by someone who, above all, sponsored his expenses in his early childhood. It's interesting. Pharaoh wanted to kill Moses, and his daughter paid all his expenses to have a decent and happy childhood. By the way, I was thinking how ironic that the same river that meant death for, for the Hebrew baby, babies was the means by which Moses was saved. God continually changes evil's plans for his good purposes throughout the life of Moses. Also, when the boy went to live with Pharaoh's daughter, he was given a new name. Ironically, or perhaps providentially, he who received 
his name because he was taken out of the water, would be the one who would later take out the Hebrews out of Egypt. Now my question to you is, have you been reached by God's grace? Can you remember the person or perhaps the circumstances that God used to save you? How someone perhaps invested in your life so that you came to know the Lord? Perhaps you are going through hard and difficult situations and God is using those circumstances to call your attention. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And usually tough times are the best ways for us to listen to the loving voice of God. He desires to reach out to you, give you forgiveness from your sins, and be someone whose presence will never depart from you. This part of Moses' life reminds me of how often this is a situation in which we find many babies, many children uh, that we help through Child Care International. The local church that serves our beneficiaries, along with the sacrificial help of a sponsor, are the means that God uses to free and save in the midst of crisis. And that is when hope begins to shine in their lives. As in the life of Moses, through pain, God is always working and bringing hope. So what happened with Philippe? This is one of the first photos we have of Philippe. Uh, after being born in a poor family with two brothers and three sisters, chances to have an education were almost none. However, hope came one day to his life when a Canadian couple decided to sponsor him through Child Care International. A teacher from a local school came to his house and gave him and his parents the news that he was sponsored and therefore had the chance to go to school and he didn't need to worry about paying school fees. His life started to change since the moment he started to attend a Christian school. His faith and understanding of the Bible grew and he started to attend a local church in Lagrange with his family. Let's move on to the third phase of Moses' life. And I find that he started to be living and growing guided by the hand of God. Chapter 2, verses 15 and 22. This is a very nice, very, very nice story. It says, when Pharaoh heard about this matter, so Moses killed a man, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh and, start, and settled in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Then the shepherds came and drove them away. Yeah, these mean guys. But Moses stood up and helped them and water their flock. Then they came to the far railroad, and he said, why have you come back so soon today? And they said, well, an Egyptian saved us from the shepherds. And what is more, he even drew water for us and watered the flock. So he said to his daughters, where is he then? Why is it that you have left the man behind? Invite him to have something to eat. And Moses was willing to live with the man, and he gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses. Then she gave birth to a son, and he named him Hersham, for he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. Well, this stage in the life of Moses was what God used to teach him many lessons and to form his heart and mind. He underwent many changes as a result of his internal transformation. He developed a servant's attitude. I mean, he defended the women at a well, but not only that, he also gave water to their animals, hardly a task that a future Egyptian pharaoh will do. When he married Zipporah and started a family, Moses showed his willingness to be separated from the most powerful throne in the world and work in the shadows of a dark home in a secluded and deserted land. But he also developed the ability to rest and trust in God. Now, let's meditate a little bit in our own lives. How have you been growing and guided by the hand of God? Through trials, tribulations, difficult experiences, God wants to show his continuous presence in our lives. Moses had to endure lonely moments, struggling with difficult thoughts on his head. 
Now he finds himself living a miserable life in the desert that he never thought would face. Now my question to you is, what has been your desert? Or maybe the growth process in your life has been stopped, hindered by something? How are you influencing others to guide them to be closer to God? How are you being used by God for the benefit of others? The children that we sponsor in, through CCI, Child Care International, also go through these periods of time in their lives. And we walk alongside them while their character is being refined and they acquire different skills. God had a plan for Moses, and he still has a plan for the young people that we serve. Just as this desert trips with his sheep prepared Moses to lead a group of ungrateful and inconsistent people through the promised land, our beneficiaries gain skills that equip them to be better leaders in their churches, in their communities and families. But more than anything, they are learning that God is with them at this stage, and he is going to continue shaping and helping them. But let's go back to the story of Philippe. So he knew that education was the key to unlock the grip of poverty in his own life and his nation. Through his deep faith in God, a scholarship through Child Care International, and support from his sponsors in Canada, Philippe excelled in his study and passed his admission exams to medical school. Philippe then registered in English classes. Yeah, that's the institute that he went to in Haiti. So registered in English classes because in Haiti they speak Creole, a mix of local French um, language, uh, while he waited uh, for the opportunity to start attending medical school in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Then he started attending university. This is the first photo, first day of university. I'm faced with an overwhelming schedule of classes. Started at 7 a.m., finished at 5 p.m., seven days a week. His faith and perseverance helped him to achieve good grades. He also took part in community-focused health programs and attended conferences. During this very busy time, he always remembered God's promises. A really important part of his life was receiving letters. Remember I told you he was sponsored by some Canadian couple, and that couple always encouraged him to keep on pressing on, to never leave his faith, to always consider God in his paths. Here are some letters that we scanned from that time in which his sponsors it's beautiful, it's Jeremiah 29, 11, and the verse there, we're so very proud of you. These children never receive those encouraging words. They are usually not even loved by their families. And suddenly, a couple, family that they don't even know, starts praying for him and supporting him spiritually. These letters, they told him how much they love him and pray for him. They always encourage him to study, and followed the Lord. Here's another letter that they wrote. Okay, let's go back to the life of Moses. And the final stage in his life that I find is that he was used to release others through his leadership. Let's jump a little bit to Exodus chapter 14. 14, 1, 4. Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. So this is Moses taking the people out of Egypt, and he's facing, well, the sea there. They are not able to cross. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight with you, for you while you keep silent. And finally, some books I had in Deuteronomy 34.1, you can see it on the screen. This is the final days of Moses. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, and the Lord showed him all the land. The land that was promised, he was able to see. Well, the last stage in the life of Moses that comes to mind is his leadership. We remember everything the Israelites went through to get to the land that God had promised they will receive. Guided by this powerful man of God, the plagues in Egypt, 
the passage through the Red Sea, the golden calf, the bronze serpent. Well, Moses played a really important role as God's faithfulness fulfilled his covenant with the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in his own generation. Moses was a leader, a guide who freed many. Now I invite you to look back and carefully consider how God has been using and caring for you along the way. And he has a purpose for your life. Remember, he is still in the business of using us to fulfill his plan. And as you reflect on your own story, be ready to listen and obey the voice of God. It's still strong and clear. As he did with Moses, he wants to use us to influence others and be an instrument he can use to accomplish his plans in this place. May you be attentive to his voice and respond in obedience to his call. It is a privilege to serve him. And you will find fulfillment in being his channel through which many people could be reached and blessed. Perhaps you will not be called like Moses to lead people out of Egypt, but perhaps you can be used by God to lead people out of addiction, depression, anxiety, shame, or guilt into a place of peace, purpose, and joy. This is what we pray and expect and invest in our children and youth, that they can be leaders in their context, help others, and can help transform their realities and the realities of others. And, as in the life of Moses, may they be examples of faith and obedience to the Lord. So Philip continued attending medical school in the capital city of Port-au-Prince until January 12, 2010. Remember what happened that day? A devastating quake, 7.0 earthquake, happened. He managed to escape the collapsing building with a serious head injury as one of his best friends was trapped inside and didn't make it out. This is how the country looked like. Philippe managed to walk from the demolished university north to his family home near St. Mark. And this, I'm going to show you a map of Haiti. I don't know if you're able to see here on the left. That's the route he took walking after the devastating quake. While he was walking home, he saw dozens, dozens of children crying on the side of the road because their parents died due to the quake. That quake killed around 200,000 people. So he started picking some children along the road, like, okay, come with me home, let's see what you can do. And then he found others along the road, and more others, and he gathered more than 100 children who, supported, who he supported all the way. Many days walking through the ruins, and finally led them to safety in his own town of St. Mark. As he could not return to the university in Port-au-Prince, the whole country was devastated. Soccer International helped him to start learning Spanish. Okay, well, now he knows some, well, his local native language. He learned English, and now he needs to learn a new language, which is not easy. And, okay, let's go learn Spanish. So he can go to the neighboring country, the Dominican Republic, to finish his studies. So just to give you an idea, this is the whole country of Haiti, and that's the route he took. After many years of hard work, different language, different con context, he graduated. This is uh, Philippe with his parents, with his uh, medical degree diploma. And he had the privilege of always having sponsors who support him all the ways, always encouraging him. This is one of the final letters that he received from his sponsors. Today, Philippe lives in St. Mark, Haiti, and he works in his own medical clinic. Through hard work and dependence on the Lord, he truly knows the hand of God has been on his life. He knows firsthand that education provides potential to a child for a better life. But more important, it gives inspiration to entire communities and villages. I just went too fast there. So this is Philippe. making a difference in his own community. 
So we don't want to take them out of their context. We want to empower them. We want to make them really, they know the language, they know the people, they know the context. Who is more able to minister to people there than himself? And uh, that's Philippe now. You know that young boy who probably had a shirt living in the mud in those huts made of sticks and mud? And he's the doctor of the village, uh, a good Christian witness. So let me just summarize the things that we, we saw. Born in despair like Moses, perhaps you, me, rich by God's grace, lived and guided by God's hand. We, I think we can all recognize the moments God has been with us. And finally released others through his leadership. I just want to invite you to reflect on your own story. Sometimes we don't have time to look back on our own stories. But I think God has been at work really, really long time in our own lives. May the story of Moses help you meditate on how God has always been calling you and walking by your side, but also how he also wants to use you to fulfill his plans. I want to finish by saying that in Childcare International, we currently minister to more than 2,000 children. Um, this is just a small amount, um, just a small fraction of all the children that live in poverty and need help. Live in context of hunger, disease, lack of hope. However, we have the possibility of reaching many more and making a permanent and significant difference in their lives. And once again, I want to thank this church for being a long time supportive, um, a partner to the ministry and a blessing to many children. However, there are still many children that don't have a sponsor. And it will be a blessing for them, for you to consider sponsoring one child. If you already sponsor a child, perhaps you can consider sponsoring another one. And I will be at the end of the table, and I have uh, photos, um, information about children. All these children, uh, we want to reach them. And they're just waiting for someone to sponsor them. May you be a person who can impact his, her life uh, forever. And I will finish by showing you a video at the end of the, right now. And I will be at the foyer and um, have some photos of children. Again, if you want to talk or practice your Spanish or have some questions about the ministry, um, well, I'll be more than happy to talk with you. So, yeah, some, some children in different countries. We work in 10 different countries now. And um, uh, we're just trying to do our best with the resources that we have and try to expand yeah, there's so much need around the world. These are kids from Mexico, Uganda, Kenya, and Dominican Republic. Yeah, those are from the Dominican. So I'll just leave you with this video, and then, um, Pastor, then you can come here and, and finish the service. Hello, my name is Jonas. Jonas Vertis, and I'm from Gonaev. Right now, I'm living at Porto. My name is Philip. This is my village, Lagash. I am in 11th grade. So when I was in first grade, since I was Lelo, a Lelo guy, I was very, very good in school. But today, I keep, I keep the same way. I'm very good in school. Uh, I was uh, at the school at Lagrange. This is my, uh, my church, my school, my river, the, the trees. Uh, all the things I know here because this is my village. My parents, they, they don't love me because my father says um, he, doesn't need, he doesn't need any children again. So he just gave me to, to my auntie. My auntie can take care of me. He, Chalker has made something great in my life. Chalker brings some change in my life and my family and my community. And I would like to help in all of the way that I can. One year, one year after, I will be finished school. And when I graduate to, to classical school, I plan to be a mechanic, engineer in mechanic. 
because I want to fix car, I want to fix truck, and, and after that, um, I pray that I could be a pastor, so I would like to study theology, but me, I got to, to learn the first mechanic engineer, and after I could get enough money to pay theology for myself. So, in my heart, I have a plan, and I know God knows the plan, because I talk with God every day on my prayer. I ask Him to be with me, because I want to sponsoring the children who was in the same center with, with me. Hey, with the disciple that I received to Chalk Canada, hey, this changed my life. Hey, today, I'm a doctor, hey, so I'm so happy. So to thank Chalker, to thank all the people who uh, always contribute to help me to reach my goal. Uh, so especially when I'm finished, I will back to Lagrange to help the people because these small things that Chalker has made in my life changed my life and I'm sure that I can change uh, some life of the children in, in Lagrange because Chalker worked for that and I would like to share this story about all, all, of, uh, all the people in the world. I'm so thankful to CCR. Because of them, I'll become a doctor. Um, when I'm a pastor or a mechanic, um, I would like to sponsor a child by myself, by my money. I'm an example of how a sponsorship works. I encourage you to sponsor a child today. CCI works. Change my life. You can help for CCR change the life of the other people also because my life is changed by CCR.